Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Carlick from Figure It Out Productions. The following video is a video of some kind, and I hope you enjoy it. Hey guys, it's Adam here, and today we're gonna be talking about this. This is the HD link cable for the Sega Dreamcast. That sounds really familiar, and there's a reason for that, because I already did a review of this. Um, and so what are we doing here today? Well, that was the revision one of that particular cable. Uh, and in that video, I acknowledged that there was a revision two, but I, you know, I didn't have it, so I couldn't do anything with it. What I didn't expect uh, was for Pound Technology, who makes this device, to actually watch that video, and then basically tell me, like, look, man, we did an update, and we'd be willing to send you one, we invite you to retry it, and I was like, all right, so here we are. So yeah, they sent this to me a little while ago. It was in my PlayStation 2 uh, HD pound link cable video as well. Um, so you got a brief glimpse of it there. But yeah, basically they just told me like, look man, uh, we're willing to send it to you. Just try it out. You know, we've made some improvements. We think you'll like it a lot more. And they also, and I have to be fair to them, they, they wanted to hit home a point that I guess, I, while I acknowledged I did brush under a little bit more in my video, which was that this device is not meant to be the creme de la creme, you know, way to look at your Dreamcast or any of the consoles necessarily. It's basically meant to be convenient and cheap uh, and affordable, I guess would be a way to put it. Uh, they want a device where you plug it in and it's just works and it's better than what you've been using probably but at the same time it won't break your wallet and I get that and I see that so it depends on the way you look at it if you rank things based on the quality of the actual product regardless of price that's one thing even though there could be extra steps involved personally I enjoy those extra steps and I like having things look as good as they can but if you want to be equal opportunity there you have to also observe when you know, sometimes people are just gonna want to plug the thing in and want to not break the bank and use it that way, and I acknowledge that. So I want to uh, basically review this and make sure that, uh, see where I stand on this one, because I, I know automatically just looking at it that it's made improvements over some of the improvements, but if it's been all of them, I don't know. Let's talk a little bit more about some basically stuff you're gonna need to know before you were to get this thing. Uh, most notable is that this thing will not have 100% compatibility with the Sega Dreamcast, which, by, by the way, we have the lovely Japanese Resident Evil Claire Edition Sega Dreamcast that I got in Japan and the TSA stole my controller for. RIP controller, thanks a lot for that. But anyway, yes, it works on this particular console. It works on all the Dreamcast consoles. Though, well, the ones that have the outputs, like the divers won't do it, but that doesn't matter. Um, Anyway, uh, yeah, so there are certain compatibility issues which you guys need to know up front, which is not the fault of the cable or any of its competitors, by the way. Uh, basically, the deal with that is that uh Sega put into this thing VGA support, which meant that every game on the Sega Dreamcast was capable of outputting at 480p. Every game having an asterisk next to it, because it's not actually every game. Of the nearly 800 game library, there's about 100 that don't actually work, which sounds like a lot, but it's even that is not as bad as it sounds, because about half of those you can actually force to work. Um, I'm not entirely certain of why, but essentially they don't have the code in them necessary to run the VGA modes. The VGA modes giving you, again, all the high resolution outputs, which you would need if you want to use this to A, make your games look better, and B, just to function, because this device is a straight 480p VGA mode pass-through. It takes the original 480p signal, converts it to HDMI, and outputs it. It doesn't do anything else, so it can't understand the 480i games. Um, now, what that means is, uh, when it comes to those games that don't work, like I said, half of them you can force to work. And there's two ways to do that. There's the hardware method, which this option does not have. Things like the Bahar Bros cables, the Akura, the Gecko, they have that. There's a little physical switch where you start it in one mode and at the right time you flick that switch and then uh, you can play a non-VGA compatible game in VGA mode using their device. This doesn't have that. Now, in their defense, and I said this the first time around as well, I don't really care about that because I've always preferred the second method, which is the software method. Specifically, I use a disc called Codebreaker. If you put Codebreaker in here, uh, as I'm sure a lot of older gamers remember, it's basically like you know Action Replay or Game Shark. It's just a boot disc. You run that first, take it out at the right time, put in your game that's not VGA compatible, tell it to load, it provides the necessary code, bada bing, bada boom, you're playing your game in VGA. So there's really only 50 or so games that won't actually work with this cable. And I wanna stress this very clearly, all the stuff I just described for the most part won't matter because almost every game will work with it just straight out of the box as is designed. Uh, there are some other freaky exceptions in there, and I've mentioned some of these before, like Skies of Arcadia is one of them. Uh, North American and Japanese copy, no problem, works, you know, it's VGA compatible. European, Australian copy, for whatever reason, not in there, they it doesn't support it. Uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, all three regions, that game did not have VGA code, but in Japan, 
Later on, they re-released the game and called it JoJo's Bizarre Adventure for Matching Service, which is the online version. Um, and that version had VGA code, uh, so that one would work. There's a few other examples. I know in like North America, at least, there were certain Midway games, like I think it was Mortal Kombat, Gold, uh, one of the NFL Blitzes, and Hydro Thunder. Did not have VGA code, but later they released versions that said Hot New on the package. Those versions either natively had VGA options or at the very least could be force booted to work. So there are some oddities in there, and be aware of that going in, but for the most part, none of this is really gonna matter all that much. Um, but yeah, so there you go. That's, that's, in a nutshell, the things you kinda need to know before you actually start using it. So, let's take a look at the device. Now, just open it, and it's just a very basic device here with a little, you know, the cable itself, a little thank you message, and that's it. So it comes with two things, and already I can tell you one of the big improvements, one of the things I know they improved on, which I even acknowledged previously, um, is that this version actually has a breakaway cable option. See, originally the Model 1, which I did not enjoy as much, uh, basically had the, the HDMI cable was hard, hardwired to this box, which meant that a few things. One, if it breaks, oh well, nothing you can do about it. Uh, number two, you if this, like, let's say this HDMI cable is not of quality to you, you can replace it with this one. The old one, you couldn't do that. Uh, if this one was too short, uh, you can extend it by getting a longer one. And finally, if you're like me and you want to try it, you can put the M cable in there, which is a very high-grade, fancy HDMI cable that actually offers anti-aliasing and frankly makes the Dreamcast look amazing. The old one couldn't support it, this one can. Uh, so therefore, that's already a massive improvement. Beyond that, not much has changed. It still has the little light in there to indicate power. This one does have a USB port, though I'm not entirely certain what the purpose of that is, as the Xbox needed it because certain models of the Xbox couldn't provide enough power to this. The PlayStation 2 needs it because it has a scaler in it and requires power consistently. This, I don't know why it would actually need additional power, so I might have to tinker with that. I may not come up with an answer. We'll see. Okay, guys, so I've been using this thing for a while, and it's time for final thoughts. And basically, what I've decided to do, if you saw the first version of this video, is that I used Virtual Fighter 3 TB to show comparisons between this cable, uh, the Gecko, the Gecko running the M cable, the, well, the Pound couldn't run the M cable at the time, but a direct comparison, all that type of stuff. And I decided to stick with tradition. We're going to do exactly the same thing. But instead of using, like, video of it, we're just going to focus on a single frame so you guys can get a greater sense of detail between the images. So the first thing up is actually this screen cap right here from Virtua Fighter 3 TB is running off of the original model of the pound cable, the V1. And in my opinion, this image, while color correct, basically is not in focus. It's got additional fuzziness that is not meant to be there in the original image, which was one of my primary issues with the cable. And again, they said that they've addressed that and they were right. So if you take a look at the second screenshot, this is the exact same or basically the same frame of Virtual Fighter 3 TB running with this new version of the pound cable. Now, it should be two apparent differences. One, they did address the fuzziness. That's not really there anymore. But unfortunately, the image is now darker for some reason. Um, and I don't really know what to make of this. Uh, I do know that uh, that's not as big of a deal because you can't fix fuzziness. But what you can adjust at least is the color settings on your TV to compensate. Uh, although it's unfortunate that you have to do that because if you compare it to this, this is the Gecko. Again, this is there by the Bahar Bros. This device for the Gecko uh, is, I believe, $55. It is almost twice the price of the pound cable, but it doesn't have these issues. It's just showing you a direct tap pass through of the uh, original image. This is the pound cable, the, this version in particular, because the original didn't support it, uh, running with the M cable. And as you can see, uh, it's a smoother, more buffed out image. It looks a lot nicer in my opinion. It slightly addresses the color issue, but still at the same time, it is darker than it's supposed to be. And proof of that is when you run it again against the Gecko with the M cable, as you can see here. Uh, that one is much, in my opinion, this is still the way to go if you want the best image out of your Dreamcast. It's the Gecko plus the M cable. Now granted, that's an expensive solution. And it's also a more complicated solution because it requires parts literally from different parts of the world to be put together to make that happen. Um, now again, I wanna make it very clear that Pound's mission statement is about easy use. 
For 30 bucks, this thing is you plug it in and you just play it. I get all that. Um, it is not the best video quality option out there. It is a big improvement over the original version of the pound cable, just addressing obviously the first primary issue I had, which was the fact that the cable wasn't detachable. That's all solved. The image quality is better, but still has its uh, now a different issue in my opinion. If they were to make a revision three, and I invite them to do this, uh, where it did not have that particular problem, where it no longer had the darkness issue, um, that would be wonderful. Uh, but at this point in time, it's, it's just not that way. If they gave you what the Bahar Bros were giving you for half the price, all day. That's, that would be my recommendation. And it is, a re I, I can't say it's bad. I'm not saying it's bad. What I am saying though is, it kind of, at that point, depends on your budget. You know, uh, it's not the best option out there, but it is the best for the price. It is better than the Hyperkin cables as well, in my opinion. In regards to the USB port, turns out this is mostly optional. It does actually do something. Uh, if you need extra power for the cable, for whatever reason, this does give you that option to plug it into some sort of USB port. But uh, I never found any instance of actually requiring, but still it's cool that Pound put it in there. I would very much like to thank Pound Technology for sending this to me and being good sports about this. Uh, I also wanna say, go if you are interested in this or any of the other cables like this, feel free to go to Castlemania Games. The link is in the description. They had nothing to do with this video, but again, uh, I think they just deserve it. They're an awesome store run by an awesome guy. His name is Ryan. He's awesome. So there you go. Thank you very much, everybody, for watching, and I'll see you all later.